In the last video, we talked about dependency injection. Now we're going to kick things up a little bit further and actually implement a view so we can see something on the screen without just showing the visual part, which are just JSON output right now. So let's just recap. We have the controllers folder. We do have the models folder and the services folder. The models folder should not be in the controllers folder. It should actually be inside of the C Sharp app. So let's remove it if you have done the same. And the same thing with the services. Just remove it or move it over there. Much, much better. And then you can see it says namespace C Sharp app services. So that's still good. The namespace was correct, but the folder structure was a bit wrong. So just correct that if you did the same. So now that we have it in the correct folder structure, we have the models, we have services, and we have controllers. We're going to use the same folder, the model structure in our Blazor app. But what we're going to do now is just open the terminal. You can see we can use the inbuilt terminal inside of Visual Studio Code. And inside of the tut folder, we do have C Sharp app. But what we can do is say .NET new Blazor wasm, and we can do O for output, and then do C Sharp, or basically Blazor app if we would like to. But in a real production environment, you would say that this would actually be the news article app instead. But for here, we'll do Blazor app and hit enter. You can see it has finished created. And we can take a look at the directory by using ls. And you can see it says Blazor app here. So what we can do now is to open a new window. And we can do open here, open folder. Do the same thing in the desktop that we were in. Do the toot and the Blazor app and we can open it. If we now click on the launch and we get this error, it looks like a browser is already running and if it happens, you're usually on the Mac. Then it happens because there's a file which are not closed. Well, we can get rid of this problem by adding something to the launch.json. So I wanted to keep it in just so you know how to work around it. So adding this information here, PWA Chrome launch and not GitHub.com, but the actual URL, which will be HTTP and then localhost 5158. The link, which will be HTTP localhost and then 5158, like that. And it will work because now we're using a different workspace folder. So the lock file will not be a problem anymore. You could say .NET watch run, but you can also just go to the terminal directly, which is my preferred way. And then you can just go to the terminal and then we could say .NET watch and then run. And it will do the project building with hot reload. And here you can see hello world, welcome to your new app. So inside of this pages folder, as you can see here, we do have counter, fetch data and index. Index is the home page of our page. And you can see it says, hello world, welcome to your new app. Let's do now, change out the API to not be there. And let's make this one stay there instead. The page is on the left side. So we would like to go to the local host 5158. Let's copy it and add it here. You can see it starts the Blazor app and you can see it says, hello world. Since we now are using hot reload, we can actually write whatever we would like to in here and we can say news articles and if we now hit save we should actually get a refresh where it says news articles and where it says welcome to your new app we can say here we will display news articles so keep in mind that we are only doing this just because we would like to get something visually on the screen that's why we added a placer here and that way it's probably more fun to work with as well because now we have the blazer app here running we have the menu page here and we have news articles news article only the h1 tag and we do have the api running be able to be behind the scenes so that the blazer app will actually get 
information from the API. Okay, so we do have here, we will display news articles. If we save it, we should see it actually happen as well. If you see it says, do you want to restart your app? So let's just do always like that. So now I can see news articles. Here we will display news articles. So as I said, we are now going to get the data from the API. Now we have a Blazor application who are looking nicely. It says news articles. Here we will display news articles. What we're going to do now is actually to create a component. So what you can do is follow me and create a new folder and you can just call it component. So if we go to our component folder, click new file and do news article and then components and dot racer. Take a look at the survey prompt. You can see it's it's live in the shared folder, but we have created a component folder and we can copy the data and put it in here. And we can see if we can get the hold of the news article component racer the same way we can see it's a survey prompt title here. So copy this, put it underneath here we will display. And instead of saying survey prompt, we now want it to say news article component like that. And you can see that we have to import this blazor app.component.news article component. But if we take a look at the imports.racer, we can actually add it here. So if you do using Placer app and then using Placer app and then dot and we created component and that's it. So if we now go back to our index, we can safely get rid of this and we can just say news article component and it should be able to find it like that. So that's more cleaner by importing it in the import racer. So the news article component is the same now as the survey prompt, but we just took the code. So just get rid of all of this. We remove the class as well. And just see what we actually have in here is just code demonstrates how a parent component can supply parameters. We can remove that as well. So now we have to think about what the component will actually need in order to work. So this component will be able to display some news articles. Take a look at our API. So now that we are in our API, we can take a look at the news article and we have ID, title, content, author, and date. Now we can probably see that we have a totally different editor. And that's because I decided to switch to Rider. But I wanted you to see how we can work with Visual Studio Code in the beginning and see how much better it is working with an IDE. So we do have the exactly same project here. Um, the only difference is that the name is a Blazor app too. But the components are the same. The uh, pages are the same and the index racer targets the news article component. So remember back to what we were going to do. We wanted to go into the news article component and actually get some data. So if we go to our fetch data racer page, we can copy this here and then we can go to our news article component and basically put it here. So remember, we started to add some things to our file. For example, we need a list, so we can do a property list and then of news article. And then we need to import this news article. Now that we have our model here, news article, we do have a property of a list of a news article. We will give it a name. The name will be news articles. And the forecast here, we don't have that anymore. So we can change that to be a news articles. The get from JSON async, we need to use something called inject. So write inject here, HTTP client, and then HTTP, just like that. So inject HTTP client, HTTP, then we don't need this web request methods. So this HTTP, just like that. And if we see in the fetch data, we do have a protected override async task. So we need that in order to use this await here. So let's change this sample data weather to not be sample data weather, but actually go to our API, which should be 
API and then news article. And also this fetch data here will be different, so we will remove it. We will instead have a list here of a news article and that's it. So the name here should be initialized async since we added this override async. That's the method we are overriding. So now we do have await HTTP get from JSON async and we can make this nullable just to make it more happy because that way we, we say that it can be null. Now we can hit a breakpoint here, create a breakpoint here and now we can run the application up here. The problem though is that we actually need to have our API running first. So let's do that now. So we need to, to have our API running. We can do that by going to the terminal, do find this terminal up here. And then in here we can say .NET run because this is just an API. It will run on port localhost 5008. Now that we know that we need to point to this URL. So now that you know that you can use this HTTP client, it would work for most use cases especially when the API is hosted on the same port. But in most applications, we can't just use HTTP client. We need to use something more sophisticated than that. Uh, for example, we can set up an HTTP client factory. And I will show you how to do that now. So the first thing that we will do is go to the Blazor app CS project file. So you can do that by right clicking and do edit and then CS project. Inside of here, we would like to add a package reference. So we will add a package reference, include Microsoft and then extensions and then HTTP. And then the version can be six, like we got here. When we have added that, we can do another build. So head over to the program.cs file. So we will still use this builder services HTTP client, but we'll do it a little bit differently. We'll comment out this for now and then do builder services and then add just HTTP client. Now we can actually use it in our news article component. Instead of saying inject HTTP client, we will now do I HTTP and then client factory. And we can just call it client factory. I will show you a better way to do this when we are doing more advanced architecture. But for now, this is good. In the next video, we will make it a bit better in terms of architecture and how you should decouple the code. In our uninitialized async, we can create a request. And we can say it's equal to new HTTP request message. And then we want to say HTTP method of a get because it's a get request. And then here we can just put in whatever we want. And this is quite correct, so we can add it. And remember that we have our API running on 5008. So let's change this, this to be 5008. An API and a news article. News article. Because remember, we do have our API running. You can see it says API news article and the path will be API news article, just like that. So now that we have set that up correctly, we can create a client and say that it's equal to client factory and then create a client. Then we can say response is equal to client send async request. We can do an if here and say response status code and then news articles just like that and then we can get rid of this one and make it come up here instead that's cool and if we do have an error we could throw an error but now we will just have it in the if and we will set a breakpoint here the thing different now is that our http client is set it up with the correct so it should be http localhost and then 5008 api news article I will show you another way to set this up to not have it in the uninitialized async. That way we can externalize it as a service. So now we can hit this debug and when it has initialized, you can see the debugger is working.
So we can see that it stopped at fetch data. We want it to not stop here, so we continue and we remove the breakpoint for next time and hit the home. And now we can see that we get this error, which saying origin HTTP as localhost 7081 has been blocked by course policy. Access to fetch at HTTP localhost 5008 from this origin, because this is the origin we are at, has been blocked. So how do we get rid of this error? Well, this is a really crucial error that happens a lot of times. And it has to do with the course policy, the way it set it up. So we can get rid of this by going to our API and do some changes in the program.cs file. So in the program.cs file, we can do a builder services, add course, and then do options. And then we can do a Lambda here and add the default here, add default policy. We can also say, instead of default, we can do add policy just to make up our own policy. And we could give it a name. So a comma here and then our name, my specified, specified policy for example, and then we can create a variable up here. So my specified policy and it's happy. And when it can also have allow any origin and then we can also have allow any origin, allow any method and allow any header. And when that's done, we can just go underneath the authorization or actually before app use course. And then we can add our policy, which are called my specified policy. When that is done, you can see that we have builder services at cores, my specified policy with these options. And if we now do .NET run, it will build again and start it up. Inside of here, we can do a debug again. And the error should now be gone. And as you can see, the error is now gone. That was a lot of things to cover and a lot of things to take in for you guys, especially if you are just learning this stuff. It can be cumbersome to understand all of this. But what have we really done? Well, we had the API, we have the best practices in our API, but we have now started to build the Blazor web application. And when course is set up correctly, you are able to actually call different external sources that we are doing now. That's why we can actually call into our API. And that's why we are using this HTTP client factory. So I wanted to, to keep it a bit short and not too long, because if not, you, you will be just digging your head around and not understanding what you're watching. So try to take some time off now until the next video will come up and then just have fun and keep going.